In this video, I'm going to show you how you can become a millionaire using nothing but a toy hammer, some Vaseline, and a blender. What do you mean you thought this video was about tripods? All right, look, if you want to talk about tripods instead, then we'll talk about tripods. Okay, yes, this video is about tripods. It's actually come about because KNF Concept were kind enough to send me two of their tripods to test and review. However, I thought that a video about just an individual tripod might not be the most interesting, useful video for you guys to watch. So I've decided instead to turn this into a bit of a kind of a buyer's guide for tripods. So I'm going to pit the two KNF Concept tripods against my own personal two tripods that I use and also two other tripods that I've borrowed from friends of mine. And this gives us quite a range of not only sizes of tripods, but also the budget and the usabilities as well. So we'll kind of do a mini review of each of these individual tripods, aspects of them that I like, aspects that I dislike, and also kind of look at what you actually need from a tripod versus what's overkill. And at the end of the day, tripods serve only one purpose to us, and that is to hold our camera still. Well, unless you get a burglar in the house, in which case they can make quite a good self-defense weapon. But for legal reasons, let's say that there's only one purpose for a tripod, and that's to hold the camera still. So generally, I will use a tripod for when I'm shooting these videos, although in this instance, my tripods are here, so I've had to improvise for this one. But hey, whatever works. I will also use tripods if I'm shooting uh, time lapses, if I'm shooting bracketed shots, I don't want the camera to be moving in between shots, or if I'm doing a long exposure that's longer than I could physically handhold the camera for, then a tripod is ideal for that as well. So let's see what tripods we're dealing with and we'll go over the basic specs of them first. So we have the KNF Concept TC2335, which is their new carbon fiber travel tripod. We have the Manfrotto B3, which has been my own personal travel tripod now for a couple of years. We have the Hammer Traveler Compact Pro. We have the KNF TM2324. We also have the Manfrotto 190, which has been my own heavy duty tripod now for a couple of years. And we have the monstrous Manfrotto 055. Now, in terms of the specs for all of these, firstly, price. So the cheapest of them all is the KNF2324 coming in at £56, followed closely by the Hammer Traveler Compact Pro at £59. Then we have the TC2335, which is currently priced around £90. Then the Manfrotto B3, which is £120, so the most expensive of the travel tripods. Then when it comes to the pricing of these two, I'm a little bit unsure in all honesty. You see, I had to Google them to find out what the current prices were. And the prices that I found, the 055 is priced at £149, while the 190, which in theory is a smaller, inferior version of the 055, is actually priced at £199. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but basically both of these are up and around somewhere between £150 to £200. Now, maximum shooting heights that they will all reach. We have the 2335 uh, reaches 139 centimeters. We have the B3 is slightly taller at 144 centimeters. The 2324 will reach a whole 159 centimeters. The hammer will go up to 165. The 190 will go slightly higher than that to 171, and the 055 will get up to 180 centimeters. So between them all, there's only about 40 centimeters in height difference between this and this at maximum heights. Now, minimum shooting heights is something I'll get onto in a bit more detail later, but basically I mean how low can you get the camera to the ground because you don't always use a tripod for shooting high up. Sometimes you want to use them for shooting low to the floor as well. Now the good news is that technically all of these tripods can get the cameras to ground level. However, the method with which they do it varies from tripod to tripod and some methods I really like and some methods I really hate. So we're going to have a look at that in a minute. Now, pack down heights for all of these. Uh, this can be important, particularly with the travel tripods. If you're going traveling, sometimes space can be an issue. 
So you might want the, the tripod to be as small as possible. So for instance, the Manfrotto B3, when I take this traveling, if I'm going traveling within the UK, it's not a problem because I can just attach this to the side of my kit bag. However, if I'm going abroad, generally airlines aren't always too pleased about you strapping a big metal tripod to the side of your, your backpack, you know, with the whole size and restrictions on bags and stuff. So you either have to put this in a suitcase if you've got one, or in the case of like when I went to Germany last year for Photokina, I only took my backpack with me. I had my camera and tripod and all my clothes and everything in the one backpack. So this needed to go inside that backpack. Now just close down like this, this is too big to fit inside my kit bag. However, a lot of the travel tripods actually have the ability to go basically inverted. And this allows you to make the tripod's maximum length quite a bit smaller because you're basically hiding the ball head in between the legs. So now close down, this is only 40 centimeters long and will easily fit inside my kit bag. The TC2335 really impresses me because this will fall down to an absolutely minuscule 35 centimeters, so leaves me even more room in my kit bag. The other KNF concept, the 2324, just missed out on me for this one because it will technically fall down to about 46 centimeters, which would have made it just about small enough to fit in my kit bag. However, this is where it reaches a bit of a problem because due to the size of this top plate here, there's absolutely no way I can fold this together without having one of the legs sitting further out than the other two. And that unfortunately is just slightly too big to actually fit in my kit bag in one piece. If that head was smaller, then I could probably get it to fit. So that's a bit of a disappointment there. Now with the hammer, that's about 56 centimeters end to end, which is as small as it will go now but it has been modified slightly because the photographer wanted to change it to an Arca Swiss plate, but the original head, you couldn't just change the top plate. You had to change the entire ball head. So they changed it to one of these Manfrotto ones, which is quite a bit bigger. Now the legs on this won't fold all the way over. So you can't like double it back on itself like the other three. The only solution to this is to take the whole center column out and mount it in upside down but this presents us with a problem. Firstly, I can't do it with this anyway, because the bigger ball head means that the legs just won't close down properly at all. It'll be sticking out like this, it's just pointless. Had it not been adapted, I, I could have folded it down to make the tripod much smaller like this. Now this is where we run into a bit of a design flaw, and is also incidentally the same problem we're gonna get to when we look at minimum shooting heights for all these tripods because you can't just take the center column out, there's this hook on the bottom. Incidentally, this hook is for hanging like a kit bag or a counterweight on to help keep the tripod a bit more stable. Now, you could just unscrew the hook. However, that still leaves this little wedge plate on the bottom and still stops the center column coming all the way out. But you will notice that this is actually a two-piece center column. So what you have to do is unscrew the center column which takes forever. Ah. You then put the center column in upside down, you put the other end back in, you screw them back together, you've got a folded down tripod. But then when you wanna then use it, you've gotta do the whole unscrewing and put it back together again. It's just a really piss poor design for a center column. It would have been just so much easier if that bit wasn't on the end and you could just remove the center column completely. Oh, balls to it. Won't be using that again. Now, the two big Manfrotto's, you can forget it. They are not packing down any smaller than they are. There's no fancy folding legs or anything. Weight is also another factor with these as well. Obviously, you've got to carry the things around with you. If you're staying fairly local, if you're driving to events and just unloading there, weight's not that much of a problem. But if you're going walking, if you're going traveling, if you're going abroad, weight can be a very important factor. And this thing weighs what, 2,885 grams, so almost three kilos. This thing isn't much better at 2.5 kilos. So both of these weigh more 
than my heaviest camera and lens combination that I own. Now the Hammer and the B3 are just under one and a half kilo, so a much more manageable weight. The 2324 is slightly lighter at just over 1.2 kilos. However, the 2335 with its carbon fiber construction absolutely crushes this at just 879 grams. So that means that this is like nearly half the weight of the B3, which I have been using. Now let's look at minimum shooting heights for all of these. So we've already seen the rather stupid way that Hammer have gone about doing this. So to get minimum shooting height for this, you've got to hang the center column in upside down. Now that obviously means your camera is going to be hanging upside down, but hey, you can't have everything. Now that is my second least favorite of all of these designs, purely for the fact that you've got to split the, the center column up every time you try and do it. It just takes forever. I much prefer the KNF Concepts way of doing this because it's the same principle of having the camera hanging upside down. However, the beauty of the KNF is that you can just take the center column straight out and then put it back in upside down so much quicker. And the 2335 works in exactly the same way. So that is a much smoother way of getting low angle shots if you want. Now that is my second favorite way of doing it. My personal favorite, I prefer the Manfrotto way of doing it with these heavy duty ones. Because with these, the center column is actually, it's got another trick to it. So you pull the center column all the way up and then there's a little quick release pin that you can pull and it pulls the center column up, but not completely out. And it allows you to set the center column up at a 90 degree angle to the rest of the tripod. Now this is good for two reasons. Firstly, it means you can flatten the legs completely down and then have the tripod near enough at ground level. But the other advantage is that then when you've got the tripod raised up, you can essentially do like an overhead hanging shot, which I've used this tripod for that a number of times in some of my videos where I've done the, the overhead shots. This is what I've been using to do it. So both this and the 055 have this same setup. The only thing I don't like about it is I can never find the latch to get it back down again. There we go. Now, that's my favorite way of doing it with the big Manfrotto's. My least favorite way is the little Manfrotto. Actually, you can only get down to about 30 centimeters. Because the center column doesn't come out completely, the lowest you can generally get this down to is the height of the center column. You can lay the legs out completely flat and you can get it down to about that at its absolute minimum. You can technically get it down to zero. However, the way you have to do that is basically use the legs in pack down mode and just fold them over on themselves. So it will hang like that. However, because the legs don't lock in place like this, they're free to just swing however they want. So if you've got the tripod on maybe a slippy surface or you've got a lot of weight hanging, if you put too much weight on that or there's not enough grip on these feet, the legs are just going to spread apart and your camera is going to headbutt the floor. Now let's have a look at the as close to a real world stability test as I could muster up. Now, I wanted to test the stability of each of these tripods in the real world. But the problem with that is that to get a fair test, you'd have to use all six tripods in the exact same environment at the exact same time, which means I'd have to carry six tripods with me. And I don't want to do that. So I've devised this rather unscientific experiment instead. Now, tripods generally tend to show their stability or lack of stability when shooting at the extremes. So when you shoot them at their maximum height with a fairly heavy-ish camera on the top, that puts it quite a high center of gravity. Then that's okay if you're shooting in calm conditions because the camera will eventually settle down. But if you're shooting in quite windy conditions, that wind's then gonna blow that weight around and you're gonna get vibrations and blurring in your images. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have each tripod set up at the highest maximum point with the camera on the top and I'm gonna take a picture of that bug box ant farm thing on the wall. That's actually what it's called as well. It's in the brochure. 
So I'm going to take the shot with a slow-ish shutter speed. I'm going to be down at about f22 and probably about a fifth of a second exposure. Now the problem I've got is, like I said, a setup like this, yeah, it'll bob around a little bit, but even the lightest tripods eventually will settle down in completely calm conditions like indoors. You want sunshine in England, it pours with rain. You want gale force winds and horrible weather, bringing light breeze and sunshine. So I'm going to have to make my own gale force wind. So meet the Tornado Maker 9000. Well, it's actually called the stir flow fan, but I think Tornado Maker sounds even better. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an exposure of the wall, but I'm going to be blowing the camera with this here fan and hopefully not look an idiot in the process. So shot set up, 10 second timer to get rid of the vibrations that I'm about to put back into it. So here's what this shot would look like with no wind at all. And here it is with the fan. So even the 055, the biggest of the lot, has a little bit of blurriness in there. Let's try the 190 next. So none of the tripods produced a completely blur-free shot, however the results were actually really surprising to me. I honestly thought that the two heavy duty Manfrotto's would win by a country mile, and yet actually it seems that the KNF2324 and the Hammer Pro actually produced a slightly sharper result than the Manfrotto's. Now, unsurprisingly, the 2335 did produce the most blur, with this being not only the lightest tripod by far, but also having a four-stage leg rather than a three or a two. However, it is worth noting that this tripod does actually have a small hook underneath the center column for you to be able to counterweight it the same way as the hammer. However, only the 2335 and the hammer had these hooks, so I didn't use them for any of the tests. Now it is worth bearing in mind this is quite an extreme scenario. This was a fifth of a second shutter speed at 75 mil with an intentionally front heavy setup. In the real world for most people I imagine that they'll either be using faster shutter speeds with these longer focal lengths or they will be shooting at much wider angles that aren't going to show the blurring quite as much. So when you're picking a tripod it's very important to get one that's going to obviously keep your camera stable. However how easy it is to keep your camera stable depends on what you're using it with and where you're using it. So if you're using a fairly average size, you know, camera setup with a fairly reasonable focal length, then it's going to take a lot of instability and a lot of vibrations to show any real kind of degrading to your images. And if you're shooting indoors, where there's no wind blowing the tripod around. Yes, you might get a little bit of shake when you're pushing buttons on the camera, but when the camera's left to its own devices, once everything's settled down, you're not going to see anything. If you're using very heavy loaded cameras, if you're using very long focal lengths and you're shooting in very windy conditions, then yes, heavy duty stuff is there for that. And also using weight limit as a measurement of stability isn't always the case because manufacturers will have different ways of interpreting what weight limit they're stating. For example, with all of these, I mean, the, the, the hammer, I couldn't actually find a stated weight limit anyway. The weight limit of the Manfrotto B3, Manfrotto say is four kilos. To put that into perspective, by the way, my a7 III with a 100 to 400 mil G Master lens weighs just over two kilos. So according to Manfrotto, this will be able to hold almost two of those, not a problem. The 190, which is a much more heavy duty tripod, is rated at seven kilos weight limit, so nearly double this. 
And the 055, which is an even heavier duty version of the 190, is rated at 9 kilos. Now, by comparison, the KNF Concepts, the 2324, is the second lightest of all of these tripods, and yet KNF state that this has a maximum weight limit of 10 kilos. And the 2325, which is by far the lightest of all of these tripods, has a rated weight limit of 12 kilos. And no, you are not going crazy. There is absolutely no way on this blue earth that this little thing will hold like 30% more weight than this behemoth. Where it becomes an issue is how they're measuring the weights. I suspect KNF Concept are actually stating the maximum load limit that these tripods can take before they will just buckle and break and destroy themselves. Whereas Manfrotto's wording is safety max limit. So they're saying probably what the ball heads can hold before it's going to start to make the things unstable. But I do believe that for most people, you know, using a fairly average size camera in fairly reasonable conditions, light winds, etc., the smaller, cheaper tripods will still do a perfectly good job and you won't notice the difference. Of all these tripods, for me, the 055 is overkill. I don't need a tripod that's that big and heavy because I'm not using the gear for it. The 190 will hold my 100 to 400 extremely still, but I rarely do that anyway. The only time I ever really use this is for when I'm doing the overhead hanging shots, and that's where I need that extra stability. The 2324, for the cheapest of all of these tripods, has impressed me a lot. I think this will suit the average shooter perfectly well. The Hammer, overall a good tripod, and for the money as well, but like I said, the only thing that bugs the, the living hell out of me is this center column design really lets it down. The Manfrotto B3 has served me very, very well for a number of years as a travel tripod. It does a fantastic job. However, I think it's now getting replaced with this. No, this might not be as stable as the B3 at maximum shooting heights, but then I'm not using this at maximum shooting heights. I rarely ever do. But the smaller pack down size and the near half the weight for me just makes this the absolute perfect travel tripod. Obviously, there are plenty of other options for you to look at and consider as well. There are some that are even cheaper than these. There are some that are more expensive than these. But it all comes down to personal preference and remembering at the end of the day, you don't always need the most expensive flashy tripod if you're not putting it into the most extreme circumstances with the extremely heavy gear. But that's it for this video. What are your thoughts and opinions on this? What tripod have you got and how do you find it? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.